The ice cream man is coming. The ice cream man is coming. Quick, can you please buy me some? The ice cream man is coming. The ice cream man is coming. Easy, Leo. Who do you think you are, Paul Revere? Paul Re... who? I'm filling out this study guide for my American Revolution test. This guy, Paul Revere, is famous for yelling, The British are coming! The British are coming! But I'm not finding much info about him. Do you know anything about the American Revolution? I know that the British coming wasn't a good thing, and that ice cream coming is the greatest thing in the world. Come on, Layla, the ice cream man is about to pass the house. I seriously don't think you need sugar right now, but I'll get you some ice cream. If you come with me to get info about Paul Revere. Uh, two scoops. Deal. Paul Revere, here we come. Mint chocolate chip, here I come. A good morrow to you, future children. A good morrow to you, fine sir. Nice beard. I don't think we're in the right place. This guy doesn't look like the pictures, and this doesn't look like revolutionary times. Excuse me, my good man. We're looking for a Mr. Paul Revere. Ah, I see. Indeed, I am not Mr. Revere, but alas, you've come to the right place and time to learn about him. It was my poem that made his name famous. Then who might you be, my fine fellow? Actually, it's Longfellow. Here in 1874, I'm America's favorite poet, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. His name is longer than his beard. Shh, be nice and quit it with the voice. So, why did you write a poem about Paul Revere so long after he died? I'm gathering information about him for a school assignment. In my time, the United States was a divided nation. Many Americans didn't get along with each other because they had different beliefs. That sounds familiar. In the time that we live, Americans argue over a lot of things. Unfortunately, young lady, division in America is nothing new. America is a huge country full of citizens with different experiences. The differences give our country unique strengths, but they also make it sometimes hard for all of us to get along. That makes sense. So you wrote the poem about Paul Revere to help bring Americans together? Precisely. Countries need to have things that its people can share and be proud of, like symbols, heroes, and holidays. Paul Revere wasn't famous while he was alive, but he should have been. If it wasn't for his bravery and courage, the USA might not exist. Will you tell us about him? Back in 1775, America wasn't a country yet. It was a collection of 13 colonies controlled by a king who lived across the ocean in a place called Great Britain. The king was named George, and the American colonists had to follow all of his orders. Paul Revere was a colonist who lived here in Boston, Massachusetts. He was a successful businessman who made things out of silver and scratched very pretty designs on them. To raise money, King George made the American colonists pay taxes. Some Americans put up with the taxes because they didn't want to risk being punished. They didn't want to lose their businesses or go to jail. Other Americans, including Revere, thought King George was breaking the law. How can a king break the law? I thought kings made the laws. Great question, young man. A long time before King George, an earlier king made a rule to respect his subjects' rights. American colonists like Revere believed it was against the law that they were being treated differently than other British citizens, so they protested the king's orders. Was King George upset at the Americans who rebelled? He was furious and sent his military across the ocean to punish the rebelling colonists in Boston. Rebel leaders like Sam Adams and John Hancock escaped to a small town 20 miles away called Lexington and hid their weapons in the neighboring town of Concord. So they were safe. What about Paul Revere? Hold on, young man. The danger was just beginning. Colonists loyal to King George told the British troops where the rebels were. And on the night of April 18th, 1775, troops set out to surprise the rebels and capture them. However, Paul Revere learned of the British plot and rode his horse famously through the Massachusetts countryside to warn his countrymen. And it worked, right? It sure did. Revere's warning gave the rebel colonists time to prepare. They were outnumbered and hadn't had nearly as much training as the British. But with help from Paul Revere, 
the colonists won fights at Lexington and Concord. The first battles of the revolution. Do people here in 1874 like your poem? People love it. It has brought Americans great pride to have such a heroic story to celebrate and to have a hero like Paul Revere. When people have a shared history, it brings them closer together and unites them. In fact, for over 100 years, children your age read my poems in schools across America. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. I don't think many kids know it in our time, but we'll learn it and teach our friends. Right, Leo? Right, but after we get ice cream, you owe me two scoops. Do you have enough information about Paul Revere for your assignment? I do, Mr. Wadsworth Longfellow. Thank you very much. Happy to have been of service. And on your way home, you should stop by the White House in March of 1813. Why is that? Our fourth president, James Madison, served ice cream at his inaugural ball. Did he now? If you're interested in time traveling with us again, please subscribe to watch more of our adventures. And be sure to download the free PragerU app today.